education to me is the worst industry. The underlying reason for it, uh, reasons, there, there are a number of them, but one of them is that the in the U.S., um, you've got private schools, which are just like corporations. Sometimes they're nonprofits, sometimes they're for-profits. Um, and they've always sort of function very bottom line oriented. You also have what are called um, state schools, um, land grant schools, where individual states would literally donate land and a university was created. And the, and the understanding was, is that the university was a public institution owned by the government. And it was its mission was to educate the residents of that state. And over the last 30, 40 years, very few of those schools have followed that mission. The states have cut back funding tremendously. It wasn't uncommon in the 60s and 70s for a state school to receive 60, 70, 80% of its budget from the state government. Now they're getting 10, 15, 20%. So they needed to make up that money someplace. At the same time, the federal government stepped in and in my view, as a subsidy to the big banks, to the financial institutions, the federal government started to to guarantee the repayment of student loans. So the banks had no risk. If the student didn't repay them, then the, gov then the federal government would, which then made banks happy to lend you whatever amount of money you needed to go to school because their risk was nothing. The interest rates are far higher for a student loan than they are for any other kind of comparable debt. Mortgage interest rates interest rates are call it three and a half percent that, you know, you walk away from the mortgage, they take your house, but if you owe more on your mortgage and your house is worth, the bank has some exposure there. Yeah. Student debt, the bank has no exposure because the federal government's guaranteeing hundred percent of it. So it's a zero risk loan. And yet student debt is 8% rather than three and a half percent. Why? Because, because it can be. Um, so What's happened over the last few decades is that the schools are getting less funding. They're shifting the cost to the students through the form of student loans. And the schools became really sophisticated at marketing. They started to realize a couple decades ago that when students are choosing which school to go to, they're not looking at outcomes data. They're not looking at, oh, if I go to this school, that's gonna get me into this kind of job and this kind of salary and blah, blah, blah. In, they look at that, but far more important is, oh, it'd be so fun to go to school there. Mm -hmm. um, my friends are going there. My parents want me to go there because that's where they went. Or it'll make, if, if I go to a really big brand name school, then my parents are going to feel that they're more important than they actually are. So my parents are putting pressure on me. Um, or I've just been raised to, to want to go to a brand name school. And that reduces price sensitivity. So the schools can jack up your tuition because you're basically buying a premium brand. It's like first adopters. The people who got the very first iPhones paid way more than the people who who were more price sensitive and waited a couple of years. Um, and that's kind of what schools are, are uh, that they're in. So it's not at all unusual for a student to attend um, a school that's 25, 50, even $70,000 a year for tuition. And then you add on top of that, usually 10 to $15,000 a year for, for room and board. So a lot of families out there for four-year schools are paying $50,000 a year for four years, that's $200,000. And if they've got three kids, that's $600,000.